Oh, hello, and welcome to the world of Zwift, the show for those looking to squeeze every last morsel out of their workouts, their rides, and their races. So, here's what we've got coming up in the show this week. Well, the finish line is in sight in Zwift Academy Road. We meet Jules Walker, a fabulously inspirational Zwifter, as part of the Black Celebration series. We're going to hit peak power in A to Zwift. We shall get spicy in the feed zone. Nathan Guerra recons the course ahead of the second round of the Zwift Racing League. And we're going to battle uphill in this week's workout of the week. Like a sprinter's bib shorts, this show, I'm sure you'll agree, is packed. And if you want to make sure you don't miss out on any of this great Zwift content, why not hit like and subscribe? I'll give you five seconds. Ready? Go! Time is running out. You got this. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, such fast fingers. Like it. Let's take a look at what's happening in the Zwiftiverse this week. On October 14th, race organizers ASO will reveal route details of the upcoming Tour de France Femme Avec Zwift. To mark the announcement, we're giving every Zwifter the chance to ride in the Mayo Jaune for the day. There will be a series of events throughout the day with riders from key teams that will be set to participate in the biggest women's race coming in 2022. Now, I don't know about you, but this may be my only chance to ride up the Champs-Élysées wearing yellow. Feel free to send us your screenshots of you doing exactly the same. The Black Celebration series continues here on Zwift, and recently we caught up with Jules Walker, also known as Lady Velo. Now, I could tell you all about the fantastic work she does both on and off the bike, but why would I do that when she's here to tell you herself? My name is Jules Walker, and I'm an author, cyclist, Zwifter, and content creator. I started cycling or I was into bikes when I was a lot younger and I carried on cycling until I was 18 and then at 28 years old I got back into it again as an adult and everything else that's happened since then has been an incredible journey. I found that when I get on a bike, no matter what kind of bike it is, it sort of takes me out of myself and takes me out of situations that, that I'm in, in a positive way. It's a nice bit of escapism that I get from it. I'd had other people who, like, you know, who do swifting indoors or talking about it being fun as well. And I found that it was very addictive, that it was addictive to be able to, to do it. It was addictive in the sense of the community that I was meeting online also. So that felt like an extension, again, of my cycling family. I always refer to people that I've met in cycling as my second family. So my cycling family is huge. There was a whole community in Swift around the world that you could connect with almost immediately. Lucky enough that I've got it right here in my living room. I can hop on it and do it when, when I want to. If there are those days where it's just like going outside and you know being out on a long road bike session is not the thing that I want to do, I can do this in the relative sweaty comfort of my own home and that's fine as well. When I talk about cycling and mental health, I'm always really careful not to prescribe cycling as, as a cure-all. And it's not gonna be like a one size fits all, you're gonna get on the saddle and everything's gonna be perfect. I'm not gonna, gonna lie about that and sugarcoat it. There are days where I can't even bear to bring myself to, to get out of bed. I said I will never prescribe it to people and just say, get on your bike, everything is gonna be perfect. It's just, it's finding your own way with that. And that's the kind of approach that I would tell other people out there, if they're thinking about how cycling could help their mental health as well, it's doing it at a pace that's right for you. Hey! Cycling should be for everyone, full stop. But there was that element of not necessarily seeing people who I could identify with or people that I could readily recognise myself in also. And it's that element of not being able to, to be it if you, if you can't, can't see it. You need to be able to see the diversity that exists within cycling as a sport, within cycling as an activity. It can be really lonely. There, there needs to be a bit of a, a shake up. And it's the fact that we're still having these conversations after all this time as well is, is quite telling. It's like that whole thing of prepare yourself to get uncomfortable. If this conversation makes you uncomfortable, good. Because you, you need to have it. If you've shied away from talking about this for so long, if you've shied away from the fact that there is an issue with diversity, inclusion and representation in, in cycling, we need to, to talk about this. 
You can't just do something for the moment. You've done your piece, either you've posted your black square, that's all fine. Let's move on to how it, it was because we, we've done what we needed to do. It's like, we've sold racism, boys. It's like, no, 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 you haven't. Swift's uh, Black Celebration series is a really inspiring campaign to see running for the, you know, the amount of time that it is that it's not just for a month and that's it. It's the idea of the, the celebration of black folks out there who are doing things in, in cycling. And again, elite level grassroots. It's not, it's not just about the sports people that, that are doing things. It's like, you know, the community movements that exist out there. I always say that if you have a platform, no matter what the size is, you should use it to amplify other voices. It's basically about being able to shout from the rooftops about other folks that are out there. It's a wonderful thing to see that Swift is, is doing this. It really is. When I first started cycling 11 years ago and I got on my, my Pashley Princess, maybe the last thing I expected was to be wearing Lycra in my living room with a fan on and sweating and like, you know, giving ride-ons to people like in Australia or something, do you know what I mean? So like, it's another, another part of my journey in cycling. And we will, of course, be featuring more on the Black Celebration series here on the World of Zwift, as well as on the Power Up podcast. If you'd like to know more about our amazing partner, Sporting Equals, then check out the links below. Now, Matt Lieto is back with Zwift Academy. For those of you who are doing Zwift Academy Road, you've turned the final corner, the finish line, it's in sight. Meanwhile, there is still time to sign up for Zwift Academy Run and Zwift Academy Try, but let's see what Matt has in store for us this week. Last week of ZA Road and it is crunch time. The finish line ride is here and I'm pumped to do mine and see my gains. There's so much to talk about, so let's see what's coming up on this week's show. Shane Gaffney gives us all his pearls of wisdom on the finish line ride. OJ and Erica L come to the end of their ZA Road journey we dive into the latest ZA run workout before Kelly Ruck laces up her shoes to give it a go. Time for the finish line ride has arrived and you have reached the last big hurdle for ZA Road 2021. Congrats. To give you the best chance of knocking this one out of the park, I sat down with Shane Gaffney to run through the best way to approach this ride. Shane, the finish line ride is here. Tell us everything we need to know. So the big change that I want to get across is we did take feedback from our awesome community and we did include an arch at the start of the segment as well as the arch at the finish of the segment. So all you have to do is look for the arch, go hard, look for the finishing arch, and then go easy in between those segments. So hopefully that'll be a little bit less confusing for our Zwifters to understand uh, where the segments start and also where the segments end. And then the main goal is to show progress, right? Because that's one of the main uh, things we tried to do this year with this year's Academy is show progress from the baseline ride to the finish line ride and then just see how well you did in the, over the last eight weeks. After Zwifters have uh, accomplished that finish line ride, what should they be looking for? Should they be, are there programs you recommend or what should they do uh, following that ride? The first thing I like to do is have people just look subjectively. How do you think you did on each segment? Did one segment feel really difficult versus another segment? That's gonna be a pretty good indicator of where your strengths and your uh, weaknesses lie. And then we will be sending an email out with recommended next steps in terms of workouts, as well as a um, training plan for you to do on Zwift. Um, so how can someone in the community sign up for the finish line ride? The finish line rides are going to run from the 27th of September through the 25th of October. And I think the easiest way to sign up for them is through the Zwift Companion app, but you can also sign up for them on uh, Zwift.com as well. Thanks again, Shane, for enlightening us on uh, the program and the finish line ride. For sure. It was my pleasure. Thanks for having me again. Erica, we're away on the finish line ride. We've made it to the end. We've made it to the end, OJ. We're here. Now, this finish line ride is all about us hitting these segments and seeing what times we get against the ones we did at the start when we set our baselines. What time did you get up the first climb, Erica? Do you know? My baseline ride. My first segment came out to four minutes and 29 seconds. 
What are you aiming for this time? Four minutes flat. Woo! Here we go, Titans Grove reverse. Erica, 155 I'm trying to beat. Here I go. 154.4. Segment number one, coming up. Come on, Erica. First segment done. I shaved a minute off my time, and I am super excited. Right, I did it in 26 seconds last time. Here's the banner. Three, two, one, and I'm off. Go! Oh, over the line. Yeah. Oh, I went quicker, Erica. Just makes it all worthwhile, doesn't it? Here we go, Erica. Finish line ride, segment number two coming up. First time around, I did 42 seconds. Let's see what I do this time. Keep going. Come on, get after it. Whoa! Whew. 32 seconds. That was tough, but I did it. That's amazing. I'm just about to hit my final segment, the volcano climb. Last one, OJ. Strong finish. I don't want to jinx it, Erica, but I feel okay. Stay in it strong, OJ. Erica, when you hit it, don't go off too fast. Got it. Last segment, volcano KOM. Let's get at it. Go on, Erica. You can do it. Remember, pace the bottom bit. Erica, we're on the same segment. We got this. Come on. Oh, oh. 8.19! 40 seconds quicker than last time. All right, OG. Your turn now. Smash it. Come on, Erica, dig in on this slide. And that last segment is finished. Well done, Erica. Volcano KOM done. Erica, that's it. We've done it. We've crossed the line. Our Zwift Academy road journey is over. I feel like it's the last day of school. Oh, OJ, it is the last day of school and a big thing to celebrate. I mean, I'm sort of sad that it's over, but I mean, look at the times. You were smashing it then on that finish line ride. OJ, Zwift Academy has been so good to me. I improved on my finish line ride in the short and the medium segments, and I'm sure those two segments will help me the most in my upcoming Zwift race. Well, do you know what? I was just looking at the companion app, actually, to look at my times from all three, and it was improvements across the board, which is great. But the one that I really wanted to do well on was the final KOM, the big long climb, took 40 seconds off. And for me, this has been such a worthwhile journey. And I owe loads to you. We might be at Atlantic apart, but you've been my motivation. You have been mine, OJ. And with that long segment, wow, beast mode, you are going to kill it. Beast mode! Erica, thank you again. You're welcome, OJ. This week's ZA Run Workout is called The Oregon. As a proud local, I can attest that running is absolutely in the blood here. This workout starts with a fast three minute interval to get your heart rate up and create some fatigue in the legs. Then we'll work on improving your cardiovascular strength using hill repeats, starting off with short bursts before we tackle a progressive ramp up in intensity to the finish. This interval session is guaranteed to deliver you a great workout and will send you down the path to a faster 5K in no time. It's a hard workout, but these are the sessions that really matter. This workout is available from 12th October, so go get it. It's time for workout number two, the Oregon. Alright, here we go. 30 seconds at a time. 10 minutes down. One left. I can see the finish line. Yeah, that was a wake up. Uh, heart rate's up. So, that's good. Okay, first set of heel reps, one of six. This isn't as fast as a three minute interval, but it's still a good effort. And it's uphill. Okay, first set done. Break night. Here we go. Rep three. It's tough, but we got it. It's getting harder as each rep progresses. Each one becomes a little bit more difficult. Hands up, knees up, shoulders back. Last incline. Oh, got a bit keen there. Final push. Final bit of hill. 10 seconds left. Three intervals of two minute cut downs. 30 seconds left. Just two more reps left. 40 seconds in. I do feel like I've got a good rhythm. All right, let's go. Last rep, last bit of hard work. Keep your arms pumping. Think power. Who did it? Well done, Zwift.
Swift Academy run. We did it. We're on our way to a faster 5k. See you next time. Well, it's time to get back to OJ in the studio, but well done on that finish line ride. You absolutely crushed it. I'll be back next week talking more ZA run and ZA try. Yeah, you heard it right. ZA try begins. Tune in next week to find out more. Apologies if this sounds like a humble brag, but here we go, because personally, I am fitter than ever, and that is thanks to the Zwift Academy Road program. The reason I'm fitter than ever is I've incorporated the ZA Road Training Sessions to prepare for the longest ride of my life in Mallorca later this month. 312 kilometers, 5,000 meters of climbing. Yes, I am worried about it. And because I've been doing these long training rides on Zwift, I've been craving energy-filled ride fuel while riding the roads of Utopia. And the ones I had, they were boring, so I've been asking you what your go-to snack is that gives you the boost that you needed. So, with that in mind, I've been trying out all these wonderful and often weird mid-ride treats. Now, this week's suggestion comes from Dave Barker, who said, and I quote, Great insights this week, and OJ hosting is getting better. My go-to feed zone is Rye Vita cottage cheese and chili flakes. First off, thank you, Dave. Glad I'm improving. Secondly, let's talk about the food. This is the food that Dave has suggested. Now, rye bread is an obvious source of carbohydrates, providing energy. Rye flour is rich in dietary fiber, containing 30% more iron and twice the potassium than regular bread. Let's take a bite. Mmm. Mmm. Tasty. As you can see on top, like a snow-capped mountain, cottage cheese is high in protein and it's great to incorporate into your diet if you're looking to recover. Apologies for eating here right now. Mmm. For workouts and to maintain that muscle mass. Also, cottage cheese offers good amounts of calcium. The humble chili flake on top, like a little dusting, has more benefits than just adding spice to your ride fuel. They can make you live longer. They have anti-inflammatory properties. Do I rub it on my knees? I don't know. And they release endorphins, which are nature's painkillers. Admittedly, it's not the most exciting thing I've ever put in my mouth. There's no party going on in here, but it is healthy and it will keep me riding longer. So, down the hatch. Hmm. P is for peak power. Peak power is your highest average power recorded during a specific time. For example, your 30 second peak power is the highest average power output you can sustain for 30 seconds. Whether it's sprinting for the finish line or breaking away from the leading group, you'll need peak power to put the hammer down. Now crush those pedals and you'll unlock a range of elusive in-game badges ranging from 500 watts to Great Scott, 1.21 gigawatts. In real life, a gigawatt equals 1 billion watts. Enough power to light up 10 million light bulbs. Now that's superpower. Full disclosure, time traveling is not guaranteed. The latest season of the Zwift Racing League is underway with the Premier Division kicking off this week. If you want to watch the best of the best go at it live, you can find that on the GCN Racing channel. Next week's race, well, we head to France to ballot out on the Caspat course. Who better to show us what to expect than the man who knows every twist and every turn, every climb and every descent? That is, of course, Nathan Guerra. Welcome to the Ride Recon for race number two in the 2021-22 season one for the Zwift Racing League. We're on the Casse Pats. We'll be having three intermediate sprint points out. There are points on for grabs at those intermediate sections. Now, as you leave the marina and head out toward 11 kilometers of some of the pan flattest of the France map. It's about 21 meters total of climbing over the 11 kilometers. When you do hit that 11 kilometer mark, it should be pretty easy to hang in the pack throughout the pan flat. Might see a couple attacks, most likely won't go much of anywhere. You will see a whole sea of sunflowers. And when you do see the sunflowers, you better be in position because it's only about a K until you're gonna hit the intermediate sprint point that's gonna have some pave and it's gonna cause a little extra resistance to get by the rest of the pack and take out that sprint. It's 300 feet or 40 meters in total. The moment you hit the pave, it's full gas. It's a left-hand turn, right-hand turn. You won't see the arch until about 100 meters to go. All in, give it what you got. Now when it comes to the aqueduct, you're gonna wanna start to find position the moment it starts to go uphill at all. 
the pylon is not actually where things start to go uphill. A little bit before the KOM marker, the uphill grind starts with a little bit of a serpentine. When you actually hit that KOM marker, that aqueduct on the aqueduct, the pavement's gonna change, follow the wheels at this point. Left hand turn in a straightaway. You can actually see the arches in the distance a little bit. Wait till the right hand turn the flattening out. You'll be on a little 5% gradient very quickly. Do not open up. Do what you need to to be in the top three wheels or so. Open it up the moment you come around that right hand turn. Try and take down those points. Now at 17.2K, you're gonna be going through a fork in the road with a couple of Zwift tents that you'll notice. A left hand turn that you'll take immediately into the bottom of the Petite Climb. This starts out gradual at about 2%, 3% gradient. I wouldn't let gaps get too out of hand on this climb. Close them down quickly. Also, don't forget, the speeds on a two to 3% gradient on these lower ends, as well as when you do hit the hairpins and it flattens out, drafting is huge. The first lap might not be winning the race. You'll most likely be losing it though if you're off the back. If you are the one that's on the attack, I would probably wait until the first hairpin before I'm making my moves. It's also a climb that you can punch on, on the steeper sections. If you wanna be the aggressor, I suggest opening up those over five meter gaps, watching at the bottom of your screen to make sure you're not just being used with your effort. Head down, this one is really gonna hurt. Now toward the end of this climb, the last three hairpins are where the bulk of the gradient comes in. It continues to rise up to six, seven, even 8%. If you really wanna make some sort of last break happen over the top, perfect opportunity through those last three hairpins if you feel like anybody is really on the limit. Now, just like any descent in Zwift, it's all about 57 kilometers per hour. You wanna get up to speed as quickly as you can. Remember, zero watts per kilogram is what you need to see to hit that 57 kilometers per hour and get right into a super tuck, start gaining some speed. Also, the steepest places on the descent, anvil, anvil, anvil is king, especially to gain speed and time on your competitors. Now this sprint is a little bit of a tricky one because you do not see the finish line when you need to open things up. It's such a short distance from the bottom of the descent to that finish line that really it's gonna be setting up for a one final kick to the line. My suggestion as far as a kick to the line goes, open it up at about 300 to 250 meters to go, follow the wheel very, very well for second wheel, and then go full gas the moment you see the green pylon. Drafting power-ups are 30 seconds long, remember. So, with it being 30 seconds long, you can open that drafting power-up a little bit earlier than you would an arrow power-up. Remember that, maybe get out on course a little bit and watch how long it takes at a full-on sprint to use that drafting power-up and how long it'll last. And good luck out there in race number two in the Zwift Racing League season one of the 2021-22 year. And don't forget, if you haven't done so already, make sure to check out our community coverage over on Zwift Community Live. Myself, Dave Toll, Kate Bates, Anna Russell will be taking you through the Community League's action out on this course. As always, everybody, have a ton of fun and ride on. Now, I like to feel this show is often an eclectic mix of everything Zwift from across the far reaches of the Zwiftiverse. But one thing remains constant, Shane Gaffney is our rock. He's always here to fill us in on the latest workout of the week. This week's workout of the week is uphill battle. We'll start off with three sets of five minutes right below threshold featuring a 30 second ramp up to finish. After these, we move on to two sets of 30 30s, which means 30 seconds of work and 30 seconds of rest. The first set is done at a hard effort for the work interval and a moderate effort for the rest. The second set steps up the ante a bit with an even higher intensity for the work interval. This workout gets its name from drifters who have done it before with the common feedback of it feeling like an uphill battle from start to finish. Do you have what it takes to finish it? I know you can. 
Now, next week, I'll be asking the question, how do I parlay my Zwift Academy road training into completing the Mallorca 3-1-2? The answer is asking Shane Gaffney. Now, I'm legitimately worried about finishing this. The Mallorca 312 stands for 312 kilometers, 5,000 meters of climbing. I hope I can finish it, but hey, that's why they call it the hardest fondo on the planet. That's all next week, but now that is it for another World of Zwift. As always, please don't forget to like and to subscribe or even drop a cheeky comment below. Maybe tell me if you think I'm gonna finish or not. Till next week, ride on.